hello welcome to may would you believe it it's may i'm not going to mention the weather but suffice to say good grief we're ready for some sunshine um, and welcome to our new thing it's our fruit cage we've actually now got some netting on it we've got uh look a door and uh and the fruit's all starting to come it's starting to look exactly like it should so really pleased about that and despite the weather we've been determined to come down and, um, and get the netting on and things like that so today I'm just going to try and secure the netting a bit more and we're going to just have a quick look around at what we've been doing because I've actually been coming down quite a lot over the last couple of weeks but it's been so cold and miserable that I haven't really felt like getting the camera out or talking to anybody or smiling so um, yeah, we'll just have a little look around. Oh, and I want to show you my version of mycorrhizal fungi, if that's what it is. So I'm going to get my twisty ties and just finish off right here, really. to come round this way. We ran out of net. So yeah, this way is going to have to wait for a bit, but as long as we get this done before the, <laughs> the fruit starts coming on, on, the, on the things, plants will be fine. Okay, we don't know why old birds get in this way. Okay. Do you remember the little um, radish crop circle? Or crop spiral? which <laughs> completely went apart when I watered it. Well, it's starting to come up, look. Hold on. There, 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 there. And then there's probably some over there somewhere and down here somewhere. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, no. Yeah, that could be a radish. Okay, well, the water... No, it's not. It's a weed. There you come. The watering did go a bit amiss, but yeah, it's not been very long. And they're up. Fab. Okay, I'm aware at this time of year, the last thing you want to see is uh, someone else transplanting their tomato seedlings or tomato plants, uh, least of all me. But really, this has come on the back of Nigel over at Muddy Boots. On his latest episode on his channel, he was talking about um, mycorrhizal fungi and how all of a sudden there's, um, there's been a sudden boom in its... It, well, in its popularity, everybody seems to be going on about it and saying how much it um, improves the root structure and therefore the growth of, um, of your plants. So I looked at it on eBay and thought, oh, that looks a bit pricey. Went into my Wilkinson's, my old Wilco's there, and saw this. Now, I ignore the root growth. I just saw where it said mycorrhizal fungi. And I thought, oh, that's it. I have to keep saying that really slowly. My Mycorrhizal fungi. Probably saying it all wrong. Anyway, I saw that and I thought, oh, that'll do. And it was four pounds. So I thought, yeah, I'll have a go. It says um, it's got the RHS seal of approval there. And it says, within four weeks, many plants will grow a huge secondary root system, which will support them for their lifetime. And it says trees, shrubs, roses, and edibles. Now, I, got, well, I came down to the allotment, opened this up, and the ones that I've seen people use, the stuff I've seen people use has been like a powder that they clag, if that's the word, all over the roots. And oh, it's started to rain again. Um, before they plant the plant. Whereas this one, you actually put a spoonful of this in the planting hole and it's more of a, I suppose more of a pellety type thing really. So, I thought I'm going to give it a go because I've got, these aren't really particularly ready to, to transplant yet, but I just saw they're looking quite poorly. And if I can give them a tonic of anything at all, it'll do them good. And in fact, when I've looked at this one, this is Gardener's Delight, I think. Something's nobbled the stem. Look. So this one really is on the verge of being thrown out. Verge of being thrown out, don't tell it. Um, but we might be able to rebuild it. We might have a bionic tomato. Okay, because what I will do when I transplant, as with all your tomatoes and cucumbers and 
all the things that people will be able to tell you more than I. Um, you plant up to the first set of leaves and the stem should grow another root system. You should get nodules coming up along the stem. Now with the stem being damaged, it might just rot. But you know what? It's worth a go. So what I've got, I would usually repot into a pot slightly bigger like that. But with this, it's gonna to have to be planted so much deeper. I've actually gone for quite, quite a big pot. I know you're not meant to go too big because it stops the root ball forming and all that, but this is gonna have a fantastic root ball because of the RHS pellety mycorrhizal things. Okay, so here we go, compost in. <laughs> Let's have a little look at this. Yeah, you see it really, oh heck. Oh heck, something really has had to go there. Well, I think this is very much a fingers crossed thing. I'm going to, put a little thing, there you go, put that there. Put a little spoon. And, dip it in there. There we go, that's technical. So now that is there. And as soon as we put the plant in, you know what? I am going to plant it slightly deeper again because, oh God, if I do it sideways like that, I'm not going to be able to get it as deep as I wanted, to be honest. But anything's better than nothing. It's worth a try. We'll give this one a go and see what happens. Those things, isn't it? I just don't like throwing things out. When I put the broad beans out the other day, there were two really weak looking ones. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you. Look. And I won't throw them out. They were surplus to requirements. Um, I've asked around if anyone wants them, and people have just looked at them and went, Oh, no, thank you. But I won't throw them out. I'm keeping them. No idea why I'm keeping them, but there you go. Right, okay. That one now, did I say it was, oh heck, did I say it was Sun Gold or Gardener's Delight? Hmm. Oh, I don't know what it is. Right, I'll put, I'll put Sun Gold in. It's like some flowers, I won't know what they are until the uh, flowers come out. Right, okay, and that's that one done. So, if that very, very poorly stem recovers, you know what, I'm not even going to take these, oh yeah, we'll take the side shoots off. In fact, you know, I'm not going to fiddle with it anymore. I'm going to give that a really good water. And I like to think I've given it the best chance it could possibly have by um, giving it the things, things. So we'll just see how it goes, you know. So we're rooting for your sun gold tomato or maybe gardener's delight. Thumbs up. At the pond. I'm going to bore you silly with this pond this year, aren't I? Um, yeah, all these tulips up now. Yeah. What I really like is, um, you know, we always say gardening's full of surprises, but these these flowers here, the creamy coloured tulips, that there, there's some behind over there. There's even, even a couple being popped in over there. Look, um, they came in a bag from Amsterdam. They actually came from Amsterdam home of the tulip um, and the bag said mixed so imagine my surprise when they all came up this colour apart from one can you see which one it's not like the others so you've got, you've got to argue they are mixed really aren't they love this though of course all these bulbs will be getting moved um, once they're done, I don't know where I'm going to move them to, and this will all be planted up with the cut flowers, but I'm really pleased with it. Greenhouse now, I'm sure it's a familiar sight for everybody. It's packed to the ginnels, whatever that might mean. I thought a ginnel was a bit that went down the side of a house, like a little alley or something, but I don't know. Anyway, yeah, just been, oh look, there's a the shelf. Oh. Um, still planting, still watering, still transplanting. I've had a few problems with my labelling. I, I planted four Russian giant sunflowers. Oh no, even though, no, I don't know if that's them. 
and I planted them next to some red sun sunflowers and then basically I looked away and then I put them back in the wrong pot then I got mixed up so I think that could be a Russian giant because it's quite a bit bigger than that this is red sun that grows to eight foot this is supposed to get to ten foot tall I've never had a sunflower grow bigger than about six foot so that'll be fun um, but it might just be a case of having to wait until it flowers and see which colour their flower is but yeah so I've got loads of sunflowers coming potatoes are going to go out today they're still there they haven't chitted very well though look a few people have said this this year that you know usually that is the start of a chit and then it goes on and you get nice sprouts to put in but no they're not very chitted very well at all considering they're in a greenhouse they've got lots of light I don't know if it just hasn't been warm enough what else can I show you oh under here I've got all the geraniums coming back into flower now got rid of most of the um, dead leaves looking forward to popping them up that's one of those nice little jobs and where else Ooh. I don't know what to tell you really lots of stuff on the dandelion broadbeans seem to do, be doing okay now um, we've got a mix in here of some that were planted oh heck overwintered in the greenhouse um, and then put out around about January we've got some that were just put you know I don't know if you can see my I can't see my finger there some that were planted directly in the soil they're the little ones and then some that were planted in the greenhouse in about February and then just planted out a couple of weeks ago but uh, yeah they'll all catch up with each other I think and of course <laughs> It's got this most fantastically elaborate pigeon scaring device on top which is, as you can see, is maybe not symmetrical maybe not the most beautiful pigeon scary you've ever seen but hey, it's effective nothing so fine as knowing that your, your potatoes are in all right that might be an exaggeration but yeah we've got all the potatoes in now um the red duke of york which are in again first slide they went in in end of march and then the other ones which are our main crops went in yesterday actually last day of april so we've got international kidney here we've got some sarco mira and we've got some king edward so good old mix there. I'm interested to see how the Sarko Mira do. Um, everyone's results last year were really good. So yeah, yeah, they're all in doing their thing. This is actually our rainbow chard from last year, you know. And it's um we were gonna pull it up and just you know clear the bed, but Mike decided to transplant it. I think it is perennial, but we usually just treat it as an annual. But look, he's transplanted it. And it's come back and actually let's go and have a look at this one well i mean the pigeons love it obviously but you know save for a few holes it's edible again i mean it makes me wonder why i've just spent i don't know how long transplanting little charred seedlings in the greenhouse and we've got all this coming again and considering the weather we've had it doesn't seem to have knocked it we're going to have to think of more inventive things to do with it though. Have you got any recipes? Any charred recipes? That'd be good.
really not tempted to do much more today. It's blooming freezing. It's meant to be getting warmer this week, which I would expect, um, and less rain. But, you know, if I wait for a winter of warm weather, that's a tricky one to say, I'll never get anything done. So I just wanted to show you, this is where I'm going to be putting my two sisters, as in my sweet corn and my squash. The beans obviously are going over here, so I'm not doing the full three sisters technique. And it looks a little bit like a graveyard for little tiny animals, look. Looks like they've all been marked with little gravestones. But this is the grid that I'm going to be planting them in. I haven't grown sweet corn before, but I do know, excuse me, <coughs> I do know that you put them in a grid. So I've got 16 here. I've marked out the space as about 15 inches between each one. But I think I'm going to make it a bit bigger because I've got more space. So I'm going to try and make the spaces about 18 inches between each one. If you go over again to the UK Here We Grow website, I know I keep banging on about them, but they are fantastic. Um, they've done a brilliant video about how to start off with the Three Sisters technique. So take a look over there. I'll put the details below. There's a duck. There's a duck heckling me. Two ducks. Hello. Hi, ducks. Okay. <laughs> Geese, geese. Sorry, Mike's going. Geese. Yeah. It's a geese. It's a duck. Okay. So I'm going to have my sweet corn there. I'm going to have my squash running to and fro, fro through the sweet corn. And at this end, I'm going to have my tomatoes. And I'm really excited about these this year because last year I grew a few in the greenhouse and a few outdoors, not in brilliant situations, and had a really poor crop. So I've got a whole load of tomatoes sorted out this year. Um, you've seen a few of them in the greenhouse. And really I thought, I've got too many tomatoes. What actually will I do with them? And then I went to the garden centre earlier. And I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. So I've gone and gone for another... Remember <laughs> my big boy last year just snapped. I'm going to give him another chance. Okay, so I'm going for another big boy. And I'm going for, oh heck, we nearly snapped already, the black opal, which has got like a black cherry-like fruit. If you've tried that, I'd like to know. Um, I know a few people who tried black tomatoes last year and they said the taste wasn't very good, but they look nice. So anyway, so there's a couple to try. And on that note, I must give out a huge thank you to Brett, who's um, one of the subscribers one of my subscribers and he is over in the States and he saw how worried I was about my brandy wine tomato and doing the right thing by it. So he's actually written a blog post all about, so I'm really cold, my fingers are red, a, a blog post all about um, setting up support for your tomatoes, doing like a tomato trellis, making sure it's really secure. Um, I think the tomatoes Brett gets are way above what I'm expecting. I think he said, to get to above his six foot canes. Mine are probably going to be about that big. Different weather, different continents. We'll be okay. But yeah, I'm really grateful for that. Again, I'll put a link to that below. And so pop over and say hello to Brett and yeah, see what he does to support his tomatoes. Thanks, Brett. Um, and I think that's just about it really for today. We've got a plane going over. As I mentioned last time, every time I do start talking, there seems to be some sort of heavy machinery plane, train, geese, ducks, whatever. Um, so I am going to leave it at that. Next week is the Malvern Show, which I know a lot of you are going to and you'll have heard about. Tony and Brian from UK Here We Grow are going to be there on Thursday. I'm going to be pootling about on Saturday. Um, if you do see me though, do, do come and say hello. That is nice. Um, I probably look a bit confused, but I, I do anyway. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. So hopefully we'll be back in a week or so with warmer weather, oh please, warmer weather, and some sort of uh, new things going on in the garden. Okay, have a lovely week. Bye.